Okay, so this one we're doing the MEI M1 and uh, we're doing Jan 2010 um, and I've had a request from Will to do question 7. Okay, and th this question is slightly unusual because it starts with uh, the equation of the graph, uh, which is often where a lot of the questions end. But so, uh, in some ways, it's going to be a feel a bit more like a pure maths question. And so we've got this graph here, and it's marked on Q R zero minus five. Okay, and it says that this is valid. Okay, um, and y is the height, and x is the horizontal distance. Um, the stone hits the ground at point R, right down the height of Q above the ground. So, part one, when x equals 0, y equals 1 over 100 equals 1. There we go. So at q, x is 0, and y is 1. So let's label that on. So that's 1. Okay, so um, we're now trying to find the horizontal distance from O of the highest point of the trajectory and show that at this point it is 1.5625 metres above the ground. So we're trying to find, hello, we're trying to find this point here, which we're going to call P. Um, and now, I would probably use some uh, pure maths here and say at P dy by dx equals zero. Um, so do some differentiation dy by dx equals one over a hundred zero fifteen minus two x. So, um, 0 equals 1 over 100, 15 minus 2x, so x equals 15 over 2, which equals 7.5. Um, it's not the only way to do it. We could say that it's halfway between minus 5 and 20. That would do it as well because of the symmetry of a quadratic. Uh, but this seems to work. And then y equals, and so we put that back into the original equation, 1 over 100, 100 plus 15 times 7.5. Always worth writing this out because if you do make a mistake, at least the examiner knows that you knew what you were doing. Okay, even if you then can't use your calculator. So a good thing about this question is we have got a an answer so that we can check uh, that we're right. And we can go back and double check it. So that indeed does give six 
0.625. So we, we know we're on the right lines here. OK, so far so good. OK, question three. Show that the time taken uh, for the stone to fall from its highest point to the ground is 0 0.565 seconds, correct to three significant figures. So, uh, we're now thinking about time. OK, at the moment we don't have time uh, in any of our equations, so we need to think, OK, how are we going to... Uh, to this, well, we're going to think about this as a Subert question, um, and we're going to think about uh, constant acceleration um, in the vertical direction. So, in vertical direction. Acceleration, and we're going to say it's 9.8, and we're going to call that my positive direction um, for this. So my distance that I've got to travel down is that my initially, because it's at my highest point, is 0. don't know that. And my acceleration is 9.8 down, and we're trying to find that. Okay. Um, So uh, s equals ut plus half a t squared is probably my uh, one that doesn't involve v. So s equals ut half a t squared 5625 equals ut and 0 half times 9.8 squared. So t equals That at least shows that you know that to three significant figures, and it's plus or minus, but not the only one, the positive one. Five to three significant figures. There we go. Okay, um, and then we're on to part four. Show that the horizontal component of the velocity of the stone is two point. One correct three significant figures and deduce the flight time from Q to R. Okay, so if we go back to our diagram, just have a, a quick look at that. So we know about the time it takes to get from here to here. Um, because we know that vertically it must take the same time as horizontally. Um, therefore, we know a horizontal distance, that's 12.5, and we know a time. So we can use that to work this out. So we can look at what we know. I suppose the, the thing is, if we're struggling with this, what do we know? Well, we know about a horizontal distance and we know a time. So... Um, uh, and there's no accelerations horizontally. So horizontally, um, uh, speed, so I'm going to call this uh, x dot, speed horizontally equals, because it's constant, is the distance, which is 12.5, that's my my seven point five um, up to my uh, twenty. Just show that to you on the diagram again, just in case you've missed it. So 
the 7.5 up to 20. Um, that there is a distance of 12.5. And we know that the time it takes to go from P to R uh, is 0 0.656. So we can then plug that in. 12.5 divided by 0 0.565 is 22.12. Correct three significant figures. So which equals 22.1 meters per second to three significant figures. Um, actually, if I use the exact answer, this is one three, but I'm not going to worry about that. Okay. Deduce the flight time. So we've now got a horizontal distance. Uh, sorry, horizontal speed. Uh, we know the horizontal distance q to r is uh, because it's given to us in the question is 20 meters therefore flight time uh, equals the distance divided by the speed. Um, uh, speed equals uh, distance over time, so time is distance over speed, which is 20, which is 0 0.9035. Seconds, which equals 0 0.904 seconds to three significant figures. And then the final, final bit of the question is... It. Okay, click the speed at which the stone hits the ground. Um, so the speed at which the stone hits the ground. Well, we know that horizontally. It's travelling at 22.13 metres per second. I said it was 13, not 12. Um, and vertically we don't know, but we do know a SUVAT for vertically. So we can go back and explore that SUVAT for vertically, um, where we had S was 1.5625. That U we didn't know, V we now want to find out, and that's 9.8. Uh, T we, we did find out, but let's just use that. So V equals U plus, oh, sorry, uh, no T, V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So V squared equals U is 0. 2 times 1.5625 So V equals 2 times 1.5625 times 9.8 So this is using the, the SUVAT we had back in part 3 um, V equals 
score. Let's go down 0.534. So in this direction, we just use Pythagoras. So that squared plus 22.13 squared square rooted. So speed equals, and again, write down the calculation you've done so they can see. What you've done is 22.8 meters per second to three significant figures. Um, and there we have it. Um, so, I think the difficult bit of that was about changing, going into a time equation and realising that you did, you could still use acceleration um, back in part three, and then you've got Subat, and then you can consider all the things that you know about Subat for the remaining bits, and spotting that you had that horizontal distance in the, in the part four. I hope you now understand that question.